Hi, I'm Cheryl Kagan. Welcome to today's very special edition of Kibitzing with Kagan. I am interviewing a bunch of the candidates for the 6th Congressional District seat uh, being vacated by Congressman David Trone, who's running for the U.S. Senate. I am asking all the candidates the same questions in the same order, and none of the candidates will have access to the questions in advance. Joe Vogel, Delegate Joe Vogel, you are... Uh, um, my first up here recording, and thank you for taking the time. I'm starting off each candidate. You have two minutes to tell us about your background, your experience, why you're running, why you want to serve. And I have a timer. You may begin. Well, thank you, Senator. This is exciting. I, I'm a longtime listener, have been on once, but good to be back on Kibitzin with Kagan. Um, the, uh, I'm a state delegate. I represent the Gaithersburg and Rockville area. I have a great state senator. Uh, and, and, you know, I started my career, I, my family immigrated to the United States when I was three years old. I got really involved in, in community service and different organizations here locally, worked for Senator Kagan in um, her 2014 race for the state Senate, um, then went on to uh, college, worked for uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016, worked for Senator Cory Booker, went to grad school, started a nonprofit focused on educational equity during the pandemic, uh, ran for the House of Delegates where I'd been serving uh, and have been really focused in the legislature on a number of issues. Uh, just got back from our last legislative session um, this past Monday, uh, where the last day of session, we advanced a bill that I'd been working on for a while now to invest in early stage climate technology companies, $7 million going to build out a climate tech industry um, have sponsored legislation to uh, address the student debt of mental health professionals working in our public schools, recognizing that there is a shortage of mental health professionals, passed a bill to have, with my colleagues, uh, unanimous to address the, uh, the fentanyl overdose epidemic, recognizing that there is a gap of fentanyl testing in our hospitals. We addressed that and created a, a, a great reporting system. Uh, that will help us better address uh, fentanyl overdoses across the state. I'm really proud to have the endorsement in this race uh, of the teachers, the Sierra Club, um, and a number of unions and elected officials across this district. I'm proud of the campaign that we're running. We're in Cumberland right now, uh, today, and, and we'll be in Frederick on Sunday. We'll be in Allegheny County tomorrow as well, uh, really building a campaign rooted in all, in, all, uh, in all five counties. Thank you. All right. Uh, give me three adjectives that you would use to describe Congress today. Uh, chaotic, divisive, and toxic. Okay. Uh, why are you a Democrat? Well, I think you look at the, the, the moment that we're in right now, and, and Democrats, we're not just fighting for democratic policies, we're fighting for democracy right now. And I come from a family where three generations in a row of my family experienced the loss of democracy. And I'm on the team of folks right now working hard to make sure that we don't lose ours. Uh, tell me something that you have learned so far on the campaign trail. Oh, so, so many things. And one of the things that I've, that I've loved about campaigning and spending time across uh, Western Maryland, uh, getting to know so many folks and hear their stories and hear challenges is that I've been able to put a lot of those challenges that I hear about uh, and, and look to advance legislation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in Mountain Maryland right now, and one of the issues that has come up here consistently is barriers around uh, access to driver's education, not only in rural communities, but we see this in Montgomery County as well, uh, in low-income communities, right, where it's expensive, it's not offered in schools, so you have to somehow find a way to get there. So I sponsored a bill this last session, uh, we'll have to keep working on it, um, to uh, close the gap, to, to, to uh, address that barrier. Um, by providing grants for schools and school districts to provide, uh, create partnerships with driver's education academies and provide um, that kind of uh, training, uh, that, that driver's ed in schools, right? You learn about these issues. And then what I love is being able to come up with solutions. I'm going to, I've got a lot of questions and we have a limited yeah. time. So I'm going to yeah. move I'll on. What is the biggest problem in your opinion facing district six? I think it's jobs. Right. We see this across this district where um, a lot of these manufacturing jobs are leaving and folks are left with um, this question of what's coming next. Right. And, and an economy that's leaving so many people across this country, across Maryland, across this district behind. So I've really been focused on finding uh, you know, new, innovative uh, 
industries that Maryland can build out, specifically in the 6th Congressional District. That's why I've been such a big promoter of uh, climate technology jobs and the climate industry generally, because I think those jobs would fit really nicely in every part of this district. Um, okay. and, and we see in West, sorry, last thing I'll add, West Virginia is getting a lot of climate jobs. Western Maryland should as well. Okay. Uh, what is your position on abortion rights? I support uh, the right to reproductive freedom. And uh, when I got to the legislature, I co-sponsored the legislation that uh, hopefully the voters will vote uh, to support, uh, which establishes a right to reproductive freedom um, in, in the state, uh, the full uh, choice of, of, of abortion care and reproductive health care options. Uh, I just got a bill passed um, that the Senate ended up passing and we, we got it passed to the House. I was the, the House cross file uh, to provide um, that would create a fund, a grant program for abortion clinics um, to provide security, recognizing that there is a significant rise in violence and threats towards abortion clinics. I'm hoping that we get uh, the full funding for it so that every person can be safe as they uh, seek reproductive care. Okay. Uh, what would you prioritize in Congress to address our climate crisis? So I think the work that I've been doing in the legislature uh, fits nicely with what we need in Congress right now. There, You look at other countries and other parts of the world that are even leading the United States when it comes to advancing uh, uh, green uh, policies and, and reducing emissions and promoting electrification. But what we recognize across the world is that there is a gap uh, where we are going to need some degree of innovation, some degree of research and new technologies to help us address that gap. I think Maryland should be at the forefront of that, help create new jobs, help create new industry and help solve these challenges and create these new technologies. We got $7 million now uh, for that in the state of Maryland through the Maryland Energy Innovation Accelerator. Um, I think we need more money at a federal level to help figure out what these solutions are and promote uh, a faster, more urgent uh, uh, push in the direction of decarbonization across this country. Okay, next issue. What do you think Congress can do or should do on gun safety? Well, we have to ban assault weapons. Um, I think that's step number one. We saw in 1994 uh, when the assault weapons ban was passed, a significant decline in the number of gun deaths in this country that skyrocketed after 2004 when that expired. I think there is a consensus, right, that um, an overwhelming majority of Americans support an assault weapons ban. They support uh, universal uh, background checks. We, we have the support. What we need are folks that are willing to stand up to the NRA and, and push for these bold reforms, recognizing that the majority of Americans are sick and tired of this gun violence epidemic and want common sense solutions. What should Congress be doing to expand or protect the right to vote? Well, we have to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, right? I've said that that is one of that has to be one of our top priorities um, because it's it's fundamental to our democracy, right? I know you've been a champion for voting rights in the state of Maryland. Um, we need some of those common sense pro voter, pro uh, voter education, pro voting rights policies in the United States Congress as well, um, because right now states are playing defense, right? Uh, we need the, the federal government to stand up strong and protect the right to vote. Uh, could you give an example? And I'm sorry, I'm just plowing through yeah, the, yeah, this a lot of questions. Uh, could you give an example of partnering effectively with someone very different from you? Yeah, there was actually just a story in the Baltimore Banner about a bill that I worked on uh, with a Republican colleague uh, to promote access to Narcan naloxone to address the uh, fentanyl overdose epidemic. Um, and a number of bills that I've worked on, both on mental health and fentanyl, I've worked on with Republican colleagues, recognizing that mental health and, and, and the overdose epidemic that we're seeing is affecting everyone across the state, regardless of what your party label is, right? Um, and we need solutions that bring everyone together and, and seek compromise and seek to advance uh, common sense solutions. That's uh, what I focus on in the legislature. Uh, the the, the uh, fentanyl bill that I passed last year passed with bipartisan unanimous support. Uh, the mental health bill that we passed last year had Republican and Democratic co-sponsors. Um, I like to work together. Okay. Um, if you were the District 6 member of Congress, how would you work with state and local elected officials? Well, I think one of the benefits of being a state legislator now is that I understand the role of the, of, of the state government, right? And I'm so proud over the course of this campaign I spent a lot of time meeting with mayors and council members, hearing the challenges of their communities and how we can work together, how we can collaborate. Um, and I'm proud to have earned a lot of their support right here in Cumberland, where I am right now. Three of the four city council members here are, are backing our campaign. In Garrett County, we have two mayors. Um, but I'll tell you a story that, that stands out to me from Washington County, where I showed up and- Really quick. 
we had a conversation about um, the the uh, water issues in their community, um, specifically the water reservoir, which needs federal funding or else that water reservoir could fail and, and wipe out the electric system and wipe out a house. That kind of collaboration, that kind of communication, I think is critical if you're going to serve this district in Congress. Great. You mentioned some in your opening statement, but which one endorsement by a person or an organization are you proudest of? Um, I'm proud of all of them, but the educators are one that I am um, so proud of because I think it's not only a testament to the campaign that we're building, uh, but really the work that we've done in the legislature, whether it be to address the debt burden of mental health professionals, whether it be the bill that I sponsored this year to assess what uh, solutions there are to the shortage of housing for educators, meaning that educators have to live miles and miles away from the schools that they're teaching at. Um, it's, you know, they're working so hard. I was with a bunch of uh, educators yesterday from Frederick County and just hearing their stories and hearing how hard they work uh, to prepare the next generation of, of Marylanders is so inspiring. And I have their back every day in the legislature and would look to do the same in Congress. Uh, why should folks donate to you or volunteer for you? Well, we are building an incredible grassroots movement uh, in this campaign. We've received thousands of contributions totaling up to, we're getting close to $700,000 raised from thousands and thousands of people who've chipped in. It's really exciting, it's, it's energizing. Um, and you know, we're not taking corporate PAC money. Uh, we're really funded by individuals who believe in uh, what our, our campaign's all about, believe in the importance of a new generation of leadership, believe in the power of representation. and. Um, I'm just excited about what we're building and join our campaign, joevogel.org. Okay. Uh, one last question before we go to Fast Five. Uh, why would you be the strongest Democratic nominee to make sure that the Democrats win in November? We have to defeat Dan Cox and Neil Parrott. That is my commitment. Um, you know, when, when folks ask me about them, I say, well, you have two choices, right? Dan Cox, who bust people to the insurrection on January 6th, or Neil Parrott, who pushed for Western Maryland to secede into West Virginia, right? We're not, we're not dealing with great options here. And um, they would be, uh, you know, green stamps for Donald Trump and the MAGA agenda, and we have to, we have to defeat them. Um, look at the campaign that we're building right now and the support that we're getting in all five counties, the momentum and excitement that we're seeing to win this election. We have to have a strong campaign, which is what we have, but we also have to have a campaign that energize and excites people, right? We, we have ads on TV, we have mailers going out, but what, what is most exciting and what's a testament to our ability to win in November are the volunteers and the organizers knocking on doors every single day. The folks that I see talking to friends and neighbors building this exciting movement that has so much momentum. That's what we need uh, to make sure that we not only hold this seat, but also provide support up the ballot to make sure that Maryland's uh, Senate seat remains in Democratic hands and we do not send Larry Hogan to the United States Senate. Amen to that. All right, Delegate Joe Vogel, candidate for Congress in the 6th Congressional District, Gaithersburg, North, Frederick, and out west. Uh, time for the fast five. Five quick questions, five quick answers. Question number one, uh, name a shero or hero who inspires you. Senator Cheryl Kagan. <laughs> oh, stop. No, come on. That's uh, more to, more to <laughs> any love it, because I have a portrait of him in my office. He was the leader of the Warsaw Ghetto Revolt. Um, he was in his early 20s when he um, fought off the Nazis who were seeking to invade the Warsaw Ghetto. I have his picture in my office in the legislature because I think he's a testament to, um, you know, how in, in times of great need and great challenge, uh, young people step up and, and fight back. And, and he is, I think, one of the greatest heroes uh, who often isn't spoken about, uh, okay. but one of the greatest heroes in Jewish history. Great. Fast five. Question number two. At the end of a long day, how do you relax? Um, I try to work out. Um, you okay. know, it's, it's hard nowadays, but a quick workout makes me feel a lot better. Question number three, what is your favorite unhealthy snack food? Um, chocolate covered potato chips. Okay. Question number four, what is something that most folks don't know about you? Uh, my favorite fun fact is that I ran a petting zoo for three weeks. Um, and there are some interesting stories about those three weeks, but I will have to hear those another time. And the last question, the one I ask in all of my podcasts, Delegate Joe Vogel, congressional candidate, what is your hidden secret superpower? What's a skill or talent you have that's something most folks can't do? Um, you know, I, I don't know how perfect this answer will be, but the, the one thing that I love and, and I'm committed to doing is just trying to make people laugh and smile, right? And I think that's when I walk into a room, I, I try to lift up that energy um, because I think we need it nowadays. There's a lot of sadness and a lot of anger and a lot of frustration. And I think just trying to make people smile goes goes a long way right now. Right. 
Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining me from Cumberland, Maryland, from far Western Maryland, for figuring out how to have Wi-Fi there and for taking time off the campaign trail. Always good to see you. Wishing you the best. Thank you so much. Take care. See you soon. Hey!